Chapter 3, Lesson 11, Essential Question. How can the strategy Make a Table help you organize and keep track of your bank account balance? Unlock the problem. At the end of May, Mrs. Freeman had an account balance of $442.37. Since then, she has written a check for $63.92 and made a deposit of $350. Mrs. Freeman says that she has $729.45 in her account. Make a table to determine if Mrs. Freeman is correct. Now we need to underline what you are being asked to find and circle the important numbers. Press pause and do so. You should have underlined the last sentence. There was no question mark in this story problem, but right here in the last sentence it says make a table to determine if Mrs. Freeman is correct. And then the important numbers are $442.37, which is what she started with. I also, right here, I circled the word check so that I knew that I would be subtracting $63.92. And then deposit means adding the $350, and then she her total is $729.45, which is what you are checking. So now we're going to use our graphic organizer, which is this big rectangle, and fill out um, the information. The first question is, what do I need to find? Well, we already underlined that right here. So, finish the sentence. I need to find blank. Fill it in. You should have written something along the lines of that you need to find if Mrs. Freeman has $729.45 in her account. What information do you need to use? You need to use what information? Well, you need to use what she started with, the check that she wrote for the amount of it, the deposit that she made, and what Mrs. Freeman says that she has. Fill that information in in this box. I wrote them out, the amount she started with, $442.37, the check amount, $63.92, and the deposit amount of $350. Now that we have that information, how will I use the information? I need to make a table and use the information to... Well, the first thing I have to do after I have my starting amount is I need to subtract the amount of the check and then I need to add the amount of the deposit to find the ending balance. Now that we've made our plan, we found the information you need, the information, what you need to find, the information you need, and then you have your plan of attack, we are going to actually solve the problem. So this here is a table. It is made up of rows that go horizontally and columns that go vertically. And we have the May balance, which is the starting balance for our problem. We have our check amount, which goes in a subtraction column. That's our check amount. Set up for subtraction right here. Now this space between is where we're going to write our balance after she wrote the check. But we're going to use the grid paper down here, or the graph paper, to help us stay aligned. So right here you can see that it has a subtraction problem. Set up $442 minus 37 and 37 cents minus $63.92.
in this grid paper. Make sure that your decimals are aligned. Once you have your problem set up, go ahead and do your subtraction. Remember to stay organized and bring your decimal straight down. The answer to your subtraction problem should have been $378.45. You need to take this answer and write it into this column, the white column. Go ahead and do that. Our next step is to add the deposit. A deposit is when you are putting it in something. So in this case, you're adding $350. So we're going to do our plus sign, dollar sign, $350 with no change. And you should try to keep them aligned as much as possible. And then you are also going to add your $350 down here making sure that your decimals stay aligned, bringing your decimals straight down. Now go ahead and add $350 to your previous answer of $378.45. If you did your adding correctly, you should have ended up with $728.45. If you did not end up with this, double check your computation and make sure you didn't make a small mistake. So Mrs. Freeman's correct balance is $728.45. So Mrs. Freeman was not correct with $729. We, her correct balance is $728.45. So now how can you tell if your answer is reasonable? What can you do to check your answer? And when they, actually, when they say reasonable, they don't want you to find the exact. They just want you, how could you say that that answer makes sense? What skill have we practiced? I would write, I can estimate. That is the skill that we have been practicing to find an answer that is close. So I can estimate to check reasonableness. You may now turn your page over. Try another problem. Nick is buying juice for himself and five friends. Each bottle of juice costs $1.25. How much does six bottles of juice cost? Make a table to find the cost of six bottles of juice. Go ahead and underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important numbers. You should have underlined make a table to find the cost of six bottles of juice and then circled six bottles and a dollar twenty-five cents. You should not have circled the five friends because that six bottles is the five friends plus Nick. So that is a number that you do not need. Now, you are going to rewrite what you need to find and the information you need to use. Answer the first two boxes. What you are being asked to find is the cost of six bottles of juice and the information that you need is the price of a bottle and the total number of bottles being bought. Now you need to make your plan of attack. How will you use this information? They told you that you have to make a table. So in this problem, you were told to make a table. There may be other strategies to solve this problem, but in this case, you were told to make a table, so that's what you need to do. So you are going to be making a table and add the price of a bottle until you find the cost of six. Now to get you started, we only need two columns because we are working with the number of bottles of juice
and then we're working with the total money. So if we had one, the cost was $1.25. If we had two, what would the total be? Three. Fill that out until you get to six. Press pause. If you filled out your table correctly, you should have increased by $1.25 in the total column. And when you got to six, you should have stopped and ended up with $7.50. So, the total cost of six bottles of juice is $7.50. So now, what if Jenny says that 12 bottles of juice cost $25? Is Jenny's statement reasonable? Explain. What do you think? I say no. It is not reasonable because if we look at what we just did, six bottles of juice is seven fifty. Twelve is twice of six. So what's twice of seven fifty? It is not twenty five dollars. It is actually fifteen dollars. So finish your sentence to dis explain why $25 is not reasonable. I finished it by no because six bottles cost $7.50 and twice as many would cost $15. So think about this. If Nick had $10, how many bottles of juice could he buy? We can extend our table if you want but how many do you think he could buy? Like I said, we could have extended our table, which I did right here, or if you were able to do that math in your head, that's okay. Either way, you should have come up with the answer of eight bottles. Turn your page over. Work on the share and show problems. Make sure that you underline what you are being asked to find and circling the important numbers. The more you practice, the better you will be at figuring out what you are asked to do. Press pause while you work. Here is a hint to get you going for number one. If you need more space than what is allowed, you can write in this area as well. This is the answer for number one. I do want you to know that you do not need to have these combinations in this order, but you do need to have all four. For number three, you don't have to do the subtraction and the addition in this order as long as your balance will be the same. So in number four, you should have the correct balance as 839 dollars and 54 cents. So remember, today's lesson was all about using the tables to solve problems, in this case involving money.